and welcome to this week's Midweek Moment on this Ash Wednesday, the start of the season of Lent. We again begin with a prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service, so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> Again, please hit like and subscribe so that we can increase our ability to get the Word of God out there to a larger audience. Again, uh, thank you for paying attention to the uh, announcements scrolled on the screen. A couple of things that I do want to highlight is just a reminder of the Lenten disciplines required of us as Catholics. Fasting is required of us uh, Catholics who, between the ages of 18 and 59, today uh, on Ash Wednesday and on Good Friday. Abstaining from meat is required of us Catholics over the age of 14 on uh, today, Ash Wednesday, and all Fridays of Lent. Catholics are also encouraged to perform acts of charity and focus on prayer during the entire season of Lent. The opening prayer that I used comes from the Mass for today, Ash Wednesday. And in it, we might notice that there is a lot of what I would call military-type imagery. The prayer speaks of campaign, battle against spiritual evils, armed with weapons. Now, all of that might throw us off, especially as we begin the season of Lent. It might get us to thinking that we are at war, or something like that. <clears throat> and given the current state of various parts of our world, it's not an image that we would like to entertain, again, especially as we begin such a holy time of our faith. Yet we are entering into a battle because Lent is a reminder that we live in a constant and very real struggle. <clears throat> now to be clear and to give us assurance, Jesus has already won the war. The devil has already been defeated by Jesus' death and resurrection. And what we are experiencing now are the little skirmishes that are being led by the devil and his followers as a last-ditch effort to gain the upper hand. See, the devil knows that he has lost the war, but it is not stopping him from thinking that he can overturn God's victory. So as a seminary professor once described it, the war, again, has been won. God is victorious. But we are still in the cleanup process, which includes putting an end to the small rebellion, rebellious movements being conducted by the devil, who is God's enemy. And so if we look at Lent in that way, it makes sense to us to use strong military-type imagery. Some of us may remember a time when, card when candidates for the Sacrament of Confirmation were referred to as those who were becoming soldiers for Christ. And in the preparation for the sacrament, there was a strong focus on preparing oneself to go out to, on the front lines to fight for the faith against all enemies of God, natural and supernatural. Today, we might not approach our discipleship in that way, but it, still does, but it still does not take away the aspects of our discipleship that require us to realize that we are in a very real engagement against God's enemy, oftentimes at close-hand combat. We must never forget that if God is real, then it also means that the devil is real. We let our guard down if we ever think that the devil is not real. There is a wise saying, I'm not sure where it comes from or who said it, but that the greatest deception of the devil is making us believe that he doesn't exist. Because if we think that the devil does not exist, then there is no sin. And if there is no sin, then we can behave in any way that we want. And so as a result, we end up negating and even ignoring the commands of God. And so in that way, the devil gains the upper hand and we are playing right into his game. And so if we live our, our discipleship with the constant awareness that the enemy, the enemy of God is real, 
then we end up focusing on, we, on what we truly need in order to fight him. And that is nothing more than our faith, a relationship with God that is personal, transformative, and rooted in love. And is this not what Lent is all about as we are called to turn away from sin and to believe in the gospel? And so Lent prepares us for the battle ahead with God's enemy, the devil. It does so by reminding us that God truly is more powerful than the devil. And Lent also reminds us that we have it in ourselves to overcome the enemy of God. Because if God lives in us, the devil has no power over us. And we can actually command the devil and his minions to obey us because Jesus has gifted us with the very power of God himself. And so we have nothing to fear. Yes, the devil will double his efforts in frightening those who are close to God because of his immense jealousy. But in reality, the closer we become to God, the weaker the devil's hold on us becomes. And he knows it. And so as we begin this holy season of Lent, let us rely on everything that comes from God and enter into the fight confident that God has already won and that we are on the winning side. Again, as we close with our prayer, please continue to pray for the healing of Julia in your own private prayer, requesting the intercession of Augustus Tolton. But join me again in praying our 50th anniversary prayer. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. <clears throat> Lord God, for 50 years of praying well as a family centered on the Eucharist, we pray that you bless those who have served us as priests and deacons. Bless those who have called St. Julie their spiritual home, past, present, and future. Faithful God, for 50 years of teaching the faith by giving joyful witness to your Son, we pray that you bless those who have formed generations of the faithful, young and old. And bless those who continue to come to us seeking a relationship with you. Loving God, for 50 years of living the faith in loving service of you and one another, we pray that you bless those who generously respond to the needs of the parish and the larger community. Bless those who have been and will be recipients of your goodness through our service. For 50 years as a parish community, we thank you for calling us to be a sign of your loving presence in this local community. For the next 50 years and more as a parish community, we pray that you direct us by your wisdom and guide us by your grace. We pray that you will bring to fulfillment the good work that you have begun in us. May we praise you and bless you as we continue to journey to you as we pray well, teach the faith, and live the faith. We pray all this in your name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.